Hey there folks, how you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. Please bear with the background racket you're going to hear throughout this production. We are on location where life happens and sometimes there's stuff going on out there that interferes with what we're trying to do in here. Also, the wind is blowing really hard out there today. It was blowing hard yesterday too. We had a tornado warning yesterday. Uh, the wind was just whipping from side to side. That is relevant to what we're going to be talking about here. Understand it's not really an excuse. It's just something we had to deal with. So uh, moving on, let's get into the production without any further delays. I don't want this to take any longer than it has to. We're back here today with our Stevens model 334 in 308 Winchester. We did a full length review on this rifle last month. I tested, I believe I tested 10 different types of factory ammunition with this rifle last month. Now, we got some good groups. We didn't get any fantastic groups. I think the best groups that we got were with Federal Vital Shock 165s that came in right at about a three-quarter inch group. I'll, I'll find it and I'll put it up here. The one thing that I personally felt was hindering our performance on that first range trip was the heavy, creepy... Yeah, really creepy trigger that came on this rifle. Our factory pull weight, uh, if you saw the first part, you'll see that we tested it with the Wheeler uh, trigger pull gauge. And our uh, factory pull weight uh, starting out was five pounds, nine and a half ounces uh, as an average. But it wasn't a crisp pull. You know, uh, Stevens markets this rifle as having a crisp trigger pull. I don't think they know what that word means. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. But anyway, I dug around on the internet and I found some information on how to fix the trigger. We did that over on our Rumble channel. I didn't put it here on the tube of you because they freak out when you do things like that on this platform. Understand This rifle is imported by Stevens. It's an ATA Turka rifle. The trigger on the on the second edition Turkas is adjustable in a way that this one is not without some substantial modification to the trigger housing. Uh, they put a blind screw on this one that kind of screws things up. The manner in which you can adjust this trigger also affects the sear and the first stage of the trigger pull. So you really have to be careful with it to ensure that the rifle is still safe to handle and function afterwards. Now we did test this one extensively. I did a uh, rather abusive drop test, actually put the video on here uh, to address that issue. Haven't had any, any issues with the rifle since we made the adjustment that we made. We just weren't able to take it down as light as I would have liked to have. That said, we got from a five and a half pound trigger pull down to about a three and a half pound trigger pull. And the take up is much better. So th there's that. But what kind of dividends did that pay on the range? Well, I've got my notes written down here. I've got the data from the new uh, range session that we took. And I've got the numbers from the original, and we're going to compare them, and we'll talk about what happened. Uh, I'll give you a caveat. Two of, two of the ammunitions that we tested with the rifle the first time we headed out, we were not able to test it with again because we ran out of those. And at $40 plus dollars a box, we didn't spend any more on it for the testing purposes. Uh, it didn't shoot particularly well with either of those the first time. So it's not like, hey, I ran out of these, but the group was really good. So I want to get some more so that I can make some more really good groups. Now, those were both ammunitions that the groups were mediocre. It was the Winchester PowerPoints and the Federal Fusion 180s. So uh, first ammunition that we tested it with this next time out was the Remington Core Locks. And I figured out right away, again, back to our first video, 
we were swapping scopes last time we had the rifle out. I was swapping between this Crimson Trace brush line and the Crimson Trace hard line. We actually gave the hard line away to a viewer on our Rumble channel. And in the, in the mix of changing everything up, I had changed the scope and the rings since the last time I had fired it. So when I got out there, I had a reasonable group right away, but it was off the paper. So I made adjustments with the scope to get it back on paper. And if you look at this Remington core lock group, it was 2.8 inches. I was so disheartened by that. But, big but, if you look at the top round, that was the first shot I fired after making about a five MOA adjustment on the scope. The other two that are down at the bottom were the second and third rounds. So we had uh, right at about an inch group with those two. The first one threw it way out. I would have fired another round in there to see if it would stay with the group, but I had run out of them by that point, and I wasn't going to spend 40 plus dollars on another box just to fire that one round and find out. The last two were pretty good. I was. Disappointed with the first one, but I think there's a rational I think there's a rational explanation for it. So moving uh, so with that in mind, the group that we got with Remington Core Locked before our trigger job was 1.52 inches. So we're going to just kind of push the Remington Core Locked off for another day. When I go back out to the range with the rifle in the future, I will test Core Locked in it again, but the data that we have for that one is corrupted because of the movement of the scope. Sorry, that took longer than I wanted it to. Okay, uh, the next ammunition that we tested was this one over here on the bottom, uh, closest to the center, the normal 150s. The first time we had those out, which was back early January, we got a 0.98 inch group. This time out, we got a 0.8. Five. So that group did improve marginally after the trigger job. Uh, the next ammunition that we tested was the Hornady Custom SST 150 grain. Last time we got a 0.95. This time we got a 1.75. You remember that wind I was talking about? The wind was blowing really hard right when I was trying to take that group. I think the wind was a factor on it, but again, that one didn't go the direction we wanted it to go. And I apologize for any negative influence I might have hit on that situation, but I don't really think there was any. I think it was just an environmental situation and... There was probably a side gust. If you look at the group, there's one that had drifted off to the side, and that was in exactly the direction the wind was blowing. So it is what it is. Uh, going in that same direction, the same kind of issue, with the Federal Fusion 165 grain, the bottom one on the inside here, last time we got a one-inch group out of it, this time we got a 1.35. Uh, again, I think maybe the wind whipping might have been a factor. It could have been human error on that one. I don't remember anything specifically that would have screwed that up, but that group didn't get any better. So at this point, you're probably wondering, like, well, Jay, marginal gains for this trigger job you did, man. What's going on? I've got good news for you. I started out with the worst of this. Um, understand. You know, there, there's there's no perfect condition all the time for trying to do this kind of stuff. You got to kind of work with what you've got. And I messed around. I, I I waited. I took the time that I thought was necessary to do some of this, and it paid dividends. The wind finally kind of settled down a little bit. I settled down a little bit, and we were able to get a couple of really good groups that were vast improvements on what we got last time. Case in point. Right over here, the Federal 150 grain uh, fusion, last time, we got a 1.9 inch group out of those. It wasn't a good group. 
I think I mentioned in that video that part of that could have been me, but still not a great group. Redeeming ourselves, this time with the Federal Fusion 150s, we were able to pull a 0.75 inch group. So we got those down to three quarter of an inch, and that's one third of the size of the original group with that ammo. So that one was pretty good. But that's not the only one that we fixed. Over here, our Federal Power Shock, which is my ammo of choice in my other 308 rifle just because it shoots so good, gave us kind of disappointing numbers last time out of this rifle. I shot two groups with it last time. The first one was a 1.65 inch group. The second one was a 1.3 inch group. This time we got 0.95. So we shrunk those down to under an inch also. I took the Hornady Precision Hunter ELDX back out there and last time we shot two groups with it, a 155 and a 105. This time I got a 175 and it could have been the wind. It didn't really feel like it was the wind. I'm thinking maybe that 1 in 11 twist does not like that 178 grain bullet as much as a little bit tighter twist would. I wasn't impressed with them, and I don't know why it didn't work out, but that one was kind of bad. But I saved the best for last. If you remember from our first time out with this rifle, with its crappy, junky, bad, uh, creepy trigger pull that it had, with the Federal Vital Shock 165s, we got our best of the day 0.75 inch group out of this rifle. Yesterday, I shot a 0.35 inch group out of this rifle. We got it down to one third MOA with the Federal Vital Shock 165s. But wait, there's more. I shot a second group with the Federal Vital Shock 165s. And it came in at 0 0.30 of one inch. We've got this rifle tuned down to third MOA with a three by nine scope with our sketchy trigger job that we did on our rumble channel. So I don't think it's going to get any better than that. I think we've got it where it needs to be. Three rounds touching two times in a row. I'll take that all day long. If you sit through this, I appreciate it. Let me know what you think. If you want to see some more testing with this in the future, let me know. 308 ammo is kind of expensive. We've already spent more on ammo for this rifle than what we spent on the rifle. So it is what it is. Uh, thanks for sitting through. Thanks for watching. If you have questions about what we did to the trigger to kind of clean it up, I'll put the, uh, the link to the Rumble video in the Tend to comment here. YouTube gets weird about links to stuff like that, but I will put that down below for you. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you think what we did was worthwhile. I do. I don't think that we're going to be able to get the trigger pull on this rifle any better than what we already have. Until next time, folks, take care. God bless.